Today we're going to talk about outbreaks. What are they? How do you investigate them? And how do you control them? Firstly, what is an outbreak? Well, we have an outbreak when there are more cases than you would expect of a particular disease in a given population. And in public health, we're interested in more than just the numbers, that is, how many cases there are. We're interested in, is there an opportunity to take actions? Is there something we can do to protect people from getting a disease? And with that in mind, you can understand how we might declare an outbreak if there was even just one case of an unusual but serious disease. And typically, when we declare an outbreak, we convene an outbreak control team. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about what it is that that outbreak control team does. So outbreak control teams do two things. Firstly, they investigate. They do epidemiological, laboratory, and environmental investigations. And at the same time, they implement control measures. And these are control measures to control the source of the infection and to control onward transmission. So that's the overview, but let's look under the hood and take a closer look at what it is that outbreak control teams do in a little bit more detail. So let's assume that you've identified an increase in incidence of some kind of important infectious disease in a community. You've also done the lab work, so you've got laboratory confirmation of the pathogen, you know what you're dealing with, and you've identified the fact that there are important public health measures, there are control measures that can be put in place to protect the public. So we declare an outbreak. So what next? Well we would convene an outbreak control team. And that outbreak control team needs to have the right mix of skills. So you need to have the right people on the team. The outbreak control team is going to include people from microbiology. You're going to have people from infectious disease. You're going to have public health specialists. You're going to have surveillance scientists. You may have some admin support. The point is that you want the right mix of skills so that you can conduct the investigations and implement the control measures that you need to put in place in order to protect the public. One of the first things that the outbreak control team does is they establish a case definition. These are the epidemiological, the clinical, and the laboratory features that'll be used to identify the cases that are gonna be included in the outbreak. The outbreak control team also need to develop a hypothesis of exposure and transmission. In other words, they need to speculate as to how it is that they believe people are getting this disease and how it is that they believe that this disease is spreading, if in fact it is spreading from person to person. Is this a vector-borne disease like malaria? Is this being spread from person to person like measles? Or is there an environmental source like contaminated water with E. coli? Next, case finding and descriptive epidemiology. As we identify cases, we want to describe those cases in terms of time, place, and person. And by person, we mean personal characteristics, things like age, gender, occupation, ethnicity, etc. Describing the outbreak in terms of time is usually done by drawing an epidemiological curve or an epi curve. And on an epi curve, what we have is we have the number of cases on the y axis, we have time on the x axis. Now, the shape of the epi curve can tell us a lot about the mode of transmission and can tell us a lot about the progress and the progression of the outbreak itself. Now, if you're interested, I've created two videos on epi curves, and I'm going to have links in the description below that you can click on and go and watch those videos. One is about how to create an epi curve, and the other is about how to interpret epi curves. So that's describing the outbreak in terms of time. Describing the outbreak in terms of place and person tells us about whether there's a cluster in a particular region or in a particular population group. And that's gonna help us identify other people who may be at risk, so it can focus our outbreak control measures. And it also provides information about the cause and the mode of transmission in this particular outbreak. Now to investigate the cause and the mode of transmission in more detail, we may undertake what we call an analytic study. And that might be a case control study or a cohort study. I'm not going to talk about those studies now. I've actually created a video on case control and cohort studies. So if you're interested, I'm going to put a link in the description below this video and you can go and watch that video when you finish watching this one. So all of that is the epidemiological investigation. And let me just reiterate, that's happening at the same time as the laboratory investigation and the environmental investigation and the implementing of the control measures. If we think that there's an environmental source to this particular outbreak, we'll do an environmental investigation. And this might, for example, involve taking water samples if we think that there's a waterborne disease and sending them to the lab and getting them tested. And microbiological or laboratory investigations are important not only because they tell us about what pathogen is causing the outbreak, but they tell us about antimicrobial susceptibility. And that means that the appropriate antibiotic can be used to treat cases in the outbreak. And nowadays, increasingly, we're seeing techniques like genotyping being used, and this can help us understand the chain of transmission of the outbreak in the community. Okay, let's quickly take stock. Where are we? We've identified that there's an outbreak. 
we've convened an outbreak control team, we've established a case definition, we've done uh, the descriptive epidemiology and described the cases in terms of time, place and person. We've got a hypothesis of where it is that this thing came from. We've done the analytic study and identified the mode of transmission. We've done all the lab work. We've identified the pathogen. If, if necessary, we've maybe done environmental studies. And we've done all of this to inform control measures. The, the part of this process where we decide what it is that we can do to prevent other people from becoming sick. Before I talk about control measures, I just want to quickly say a big thank you to the University of Maryland's Graduate School. Thank you for your support. The University of Maryland's Graduate School offer a fantastic online global health certificate. So if you're wanting to study global health, but you're not in a position to take time off work and become a full-time student, this is an excellent opportunity for you. So please do click on the link in the description below if you'd like to find out more. Right, back to control measures. So the control measures that we put in place, of course, depend on the outbreak itself. And most outbreaks require a sort of multi-pronged approach that includes some sort of combination of the following measures. Environmental measures to control the source. For example, you might spray insecticide to control vector-borne disease. Treating and, where appropriating, vaccinating cases. For example, putting HIV positive cases on antiretroviral drugs is not only important for their own health, but it's also extremely important in terms of preventing onward spread to others. Providing prophylaxis and vaccination to contacts. So for example, close contacts of cases with meningococcal disease should receive prophylactic antibiotics like rifampicin to prevent them from becoming ill. Implementing infection control measures like isolating cases and hygiene measures. So for example, in an outbreak of influenza in a hospital, cases should be isolated or cohorted and kept separate from the other patients as far as possible. Promoting behavior change. So for example, promoting hand hygiene in an outbreak of diarrheal disease. Education, information and communication. So for example, informing the public of an outbreak to ensure that they present at their primary care provider promptly if they become symptomatic. Or informing healthcare workers of an outbreak so that they know to treat cases and to notify public health. And once the outbreak is over, the outbreak control team declare that it's over, they'll often write a report, and importantly, there'll usually be some ongoing surveillance to check that things don't pop up again. Now, don't go away. Stay where you are, watch another video. And subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And of course, a huge thank you to the University of Maryland's Graduate School. Thank you for sponsoring this video. If you're watching this and you're interested in studying further, click on the link in the description below and find out more.